What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on Electric Talks. More importantly, welcome to the first episode, official episode of my Iron Man prep series. If you guys didn't get a chance to check out the last video, go check it out because guess what? I signed up for an Iron Man. Now I've got lots of stuff I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video, but before I get into that, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of last week, parts of my 40 mile run that I did. Some training footage, some nutrition, and uh, just some stuff you guys don't normally see. Alrighty folks, well, I'm in the middle of a 40 mile run. Last week, I did my first marathon of 2021, and this week, I've been feeling so much better lately, so I felt like it was time to try and go for 40 miles. So, here I am. This is gonna be a run that's gonna last for well over five hours, I'm trying the best I can to keep my heart rate as low as possible for as long as I can keep it. When I go into these really long runs, a lot of people ask me like how I prepare for them and what I think about. I always have one, maybe two mental cues that I use when I do these. Today, all I'm thinking about is the run as a brick wall that I'm building. Sounds really weird, but as long as you get started and you build the foundation of your run, that's all you really need. And all you have to do is build on that brick wall. With each step, each mile, there's another brick in the wall. Eventually, you're gonna have yourself a really big brick wall. I ran 15 miles yesterday and did a light bike session. I'm definitely not the most recovered for this, but mentally, I felt like it was time. So now, it's time to do this. So this is, uh, without a doubt, the hardest thing I've ever done. One lap left. This is where you gotta execute. All right, you guys, so it is the day after. If you guys watched my 35 mile run video slash vlog, I kind of talked about how it always seems to get exceptionally harder every time you push past each mile. Like looking back on yesterday, as soon as that 35 mile mark hit, I was fatigued. You know, the hard part about running long distances like this is that my cardio is there. It's just the impact that my feet take, my knees. But that is where you have to mentally prepare for stuff like this because if you're not mentally prepared, for a 40 mile run, like these big obstacles that we run into in life, 90% of it, actually probably 99% of it, is really just our mentality. And if you can change your mentality, you'll realize that you can actually do a lot of shit that you may never thought you'd ever be able to do. Alrighty guys, so it is a few hours after the ride that I did. It was pretty much just like a recovery ride. I usually don't eat this early, it's like 2.30. Uh, my friend Brian actually went to a place called Lidickers. It's like a it's like a vegan breakfast spot earlier, and they got a breakfast burrito. It's actually a pretty decent, decently sized breakfast burrito. I'm gonna give it, uh, this will be my first vegan breakfast burrito that I've ever tried before, but uh, yeah, when I travel and I'm with my friends, I really don't, like, I don't mind eating different things that I don't normally eat. I also got some homemade pico de gallo. My friend Brian and I, we both love making pico de gallo. We made a batch of it this week. Always good. Yeah. My first ever vegan breakfast burrito. I'm pretty sure it's like a tofu scramble for eggs, which is pretty common. Three, two, one, boom. Okay, that's definitely interesting. That's what the inside looks like right there. Definitely interesting. I see rice. I definitely see potatoes. Mmm, that is actually pretty good. Actually, you know what? Let's let's do what I let's do what everybody else does when they do breakfast burritos. This is probably what it's missing. That's exactly what it needed. That is tasty. I'm gonna enjoy this and 
hang out with with all my friends and then tomorrow it's time to go back home All right, so peanut butter on an oatmeal raisin cookie. Anyways, everyone, I just finished up with a three and a half hour ride, and I'm about to go hit the gym, get a lift in, and I'll check in with you guys in just a few seconds. All right, you guys, so that was the best, that was the best swim I've had. I feel weird saying that because that was uh, the last one that I had. I said it was the best swim I had. I just got done with my first thousand yard swim without stopping. Really happy with things right now. <laughs> but uh, I ended up swimming 1500 yards, technically 1650 yards because I did a few laps before I actually got into my swim. I ended up swimming like, I think it was about 1300 yards. And then I started getting this weird cramp towards the right portion, kind of near my rib cage. I'm not really sure what that's from, but I this is literally like the fifth time I've ever swam in a pool. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much learning something every single time I get in the water, which is awesome. I, I think I've told you guys about this before, but like I used to literally like think about doing my Ironman being so, I was so motivated to do it and then I'd get in the water and all that motivation was, would just dissipate, it would, it would just fade away. I, I go back to this a lot, and I've said this to you guys a lot, not even on this channel, I mean, I've said this in general pretty much everywhere. And in order to get better at things, it's super hard to do this, but you have to be uncomfortable. You know, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations if you want to get better at anything. It does not even matter what it is. It's not just physical stuff, it's everything you do in life. And this is just another one of those things that I just had to force myself to do. I had to force myself into to that uncomfortable zone that we all hate being in and I had to do it for myself and I'm I'm feeling so much better that I did that because it's it's making me better at this and I know I'm swimming I'm swimming in a heated pool right now and in six months less than six months now I'm gonna have to be in a river that's 65 degrees at like 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning and it's not gonna be rainbows and butterflies. And uh, I have to prepare for that. So that's why I'm putting in the work now to be able to get to that point where I can hopefully, fingers crossed, finish that Ironman. Uh, anyways, I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'm gonna hit the grocery store and I will see you guys in just a few seconds. All right, folks, so I am back from the store. Uh, I do these occasionally. If you guys like seeing these grocery hauls, let me know because I'll keep doing them. <laughs> I didn't get too much honestly tonight, but um, just decided I wanted to show you guys what I'm eating for the week. But yeah, like I said, if you guys want to see more of these, uh, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. And instead of me just telling you guys what I got, I want to like actually explain a few of these things just so you guys know like why I choose these types of foods and why I eat these types of foods. Uh, first things first, which is something that I don't typically eat and I haven't typically eaten a lot of. I got some red meat and after like on days when I do long runs or even moderate paced runs, I definitely like to have a meal with some red meat in it and I, I don't usually eat red meat more than one to two times per week and I always make sure that it's a lean cut. I don't like ribeyes. There's a, a lot of rabbit holes I can go into with that but I generally speaking like to have my red meat very very lean and this is definitely a, a lean cut right here so I'll probably make these tonight. I also like 
to have my beer. I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about that, but yes, you can have a beer every so often and still incorporate that into a routine. I usually dr have a beer probably like two or three times a week. I definitely do not drink every night. Uh, I like to have these as well. These are like just rice crackers. My main carb sources, and I've said this before, are usually potatoes, rice, and corn. I try to keep the wheat consumption on the lower end. Uh, I do have wheat occasionally, but I find that it actually really upsets my stomach. If I eat a lot of wheat, yeah, I'll just keep it with that. You guys see me talk about like almond milk and cashew milk a lot. You probably have seen me consume a lot of it over the years, but I started, I actually switched to a different brand of almond milk specifically because this brand actually does not fortify their almond milk with a ton of calcium. Now you'll see right here, it says about 50 milligrams of calcium per serving, which as opposed to a normal, let's just say silk brand of almond milk, which has about 450 milligrams of calcium per serving. And if you guys look on your labels for your cereal, your bread, your almond milk, a lot of these brands, I mean, you could even say for, for crackers, like wheat thins or anything like that, pretty much every packaged food now is fortified with iron, calcium, or some vitamin. And I was actually noticing over the last couple of weeks slash months that I was consuming a ton of calcium, like a lot of calcium, and a lot, and a lot of that was coming from the almond milk that I was drinking. I was getting like 3,000, sometimes 4,000 milligrams of calcium per day, which impacted my body's ability to absorb the iron that I was taking in. So I was, I was taking in red meat, I was eating beef liver, I was, you know, doing, I was getting in a lot of these really iron rich foods, but my body was not absorbing it because I was consuming so much calcium. So I really wanted to point that out to you guys just so you guys know, and don't take that as me telling you to limit your calcium intake, but just be mindful of how much calcium you're taking in, especially if you are iron deficient or you have anemia or you're experiencing some of the symptoms that go into iron deficiency anemia. So I definitely want to point that out. Next, uh, I do have some light and fit yogurt. Christy and I like this, mainly me. Yeah, this stuff's really good. I have that usually every night. And then I got some chicken. These are just chicken breasts. And then uh, for some of the fun food, I got, it's store-bought sushi. I mean, it's not like gourmet sushi or anything like that, but this is a California roll and I usually pick out the avocado because I really hate avocado, but I really like imitation crab. So I got that, I got some Halo Top. Um, that's really good nightcap. And uh, apart from that, I got some lettuce. Um, my whole stance right now on vegetables, I'm keeping vegetables in terms of like fibrous vegetables to a minimum. I am eating lettuce. I'm eating spinach, cooked spinach. From a digestibility standpoint, these really, I digest lettuce, spinach, and all that much, much, much easier than a ton of fibrous vegetables. Although I will have some Brussels sprouts from time to time, as long as they're really, really cooked. Yeah, that's like today's grocery haul. It wasn't a ton of stuff, but I thought I would just show you guys what I'm eating for the week. Now I'm gonna shower up and get dinner started. All right, so it's very noisy in my kitchen right now, but I do have a delicious sushi roll that I'd like to try. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this sushi looked different than the typical sushi that I eat from the grocery store because the typical sushi that I eat from the grocery store is typically white. And I see the imitation crab right there, and this is green. So I don't know what is going on. Yeah, that's what's happening. I will say also that the Stone Brewery Scorpion Bull IPA is a solid 10 out of 10. Make some meat over here. Well done. Just listen, listen to that sizzle. Everyone, everyone that hates on me for liking well done meat, just listen to it. Listen to it. Uh, but now I'm gonna try out some of this sushi with some avocado in it. I'm actually, I've been liking avocado a little bit more lately. Yeah, it's spicy. Ooh. Oh, I don't like that. I've got a kick. It's actually not bad. It's actually pretty bad. I don't recommend it. I'm gonna enjoy my meat, my salad. You ever try eating wasabi like this? No. Enjoy. It's a sinus refresher. Ready? Ready for this? I drink anything after. I got it, I did.
And in a completely unexpected turn of events, I have in my hands my first ever meat pie. And I'm very excited to try this out. Now, the only pies that I have ever had in my life. Now, the only pies that I've ever had in my entire life have all been sweet pies. Now, I've been made aware that meat pies are a culinary delicacy across the world, except here in the United States. So I'm going to try my very first meat pie, and this might be a very big surprise. So let's get into some meat pie. Ooh, Ooh it's got sauce. Oh Lord, have mercy. Ooh, look at all that. Look at all that steam and deliciousness. Oh my goodness gracious. All right. It tastes like a meat pie. I need to get more filling. Meaty, it's got potatoes, I think, in it, and carrots. Give you guys an inside look. That's good. All right, you guys, so I recently came home to a package, and I'm super excited about this, because uh, if you guys haven't seen my whole setup um, in my office, which is also where I do most of my editing and where I work, I have the Wahoo Kicker set up. And Wahoo actually sent me over their uh, their Wahoo Kicker and also the, uh, the Wahoo Watch as well. And to go along with the Wahoo Kicker, they came out with the Kicker Headwind. Now, when you train indoors on the Wahoo Kicker, not just the Wahoo Kicker, but with like any trainer out there, you get very, very hot. So they came out with a smart fan. This fan, it blows away all of the other fans out there. And I know that people will just be like, it's just a fan, like what's the big deal? But the cool thing about this fan is that it's a smart fan. And what makes this a smart fan is that this fan automatically adjusts as your heart rate increases and decreases. I'm super excited to pair this up with the Wahoo Kicker. And uh, I just like having Wahoo products because they all pair up together seamlessly. So I'm gonna try this out and uh, get an indoor session in. So this is the Wahoo Kicker right here. Then over here, we have the Alright, you guys, so I just finished up my first half hour training session with the Wahoo Smart Fan. Um, I gotta say, it blows all. I mean, you think about it, it's like it's just a fan, like, you know but it actually makes a pretty big difference. You can actually use two modes. You can have it paired to your heart rate monitor, or you can have it paired to your speed that you're riding at. Uh, I went with the speed function, and it's just super cool because like, it, as you continue to ramp up your speed, it will increase. Like, I'll never go back to you. It's crazy and, like, that stuff like this exists now, you know? But I'll put a link down below to the Wahoo Smart Fan in case you guys wanna check it out. It's been a few days later since I filmed a lot of the the footage that I filmed in this video. I'm a little under the weather. I got a bit of a cold. No, it's not. I'm not even gonna say it. Just, <laughs> it's not that. Uh, it's weird because everybody is like in the mode of that. I feel like society's forgotten that there's like actually like things like colds and flus that still exist in the world. But uh, <coughs> anyways, it's just a bit of a cold, head cold. I'll get through it. Uh, but I wanted to, once again, just say thank you to everybody that is uh, currently watching these videos, that has watched these videos, and continues to watch these videos because it really does mean a lot to me. The next couple of months are going to be pretty brutal, for sure. Uh, as my training load increases, I'm definitely going to be, I'm gonna be feeling it. I feel good, for the most part, except like right now, I'm not really feeling too good because I'm sick, but um, eventually I'll get better though. If you guys missed the last video that I made on this channel, I uh, my plan of action is to actually do one or two legitimate triathlons before I actually attempt to do the Ironman. The Ironman is in Waco, Texas, October 23rd. Super excited for it, but at the same time, um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm really just gonna have to put in a lot of work. I really wanted to just point out that these videos that I make on this channel are going to be, uh, they're going to be training videos and they're going to be videos that I just, I mean, they're, they're not gonna be videos that are centered around food. You know, I've uh, over the past year, as I've tried to bring this channel back and tried to revive Electric Talks, I've experimented with a few videos and it seems like videos on this channel where it's mainly based around food challenges or it's something related to a food challenge will get four times as many views compared to a video where it's just me and training. And I, I get that because 
that's just like people that people just know me as the food guy the guy that eats tremendous amounts of calories as as a creator where i'm investing time into making these types of videos it's just gonna it's just gonna be something that i'm just going to have to deal with like training vlogs and vlogs where i talk about doing ironmans and triathlons and all that type of stuff are just not going to the majority of people just aren't going to be interested in watching them and that's totally fine you know i totally get it but at the same time like i i don't make these videos just I don't make them to make money. I don't make them, like I don't really even make hardly any money on this channel. I do it because I enjoy it. I do it because I feel like there are those of you out there that want to know more behind the guy that eats tremendous amounts of calories. And um, I love that. I think that's super cool. Over the next couple of months, you know, I was I was thinking about like doing weekly Ironman vlogs and weekly training updates and just having these like weekly videos. I'm gonna definitely set a goal to do a video on this channel once per week over the next couple of months. But I mean, I do have uh, two other channels. I have my main channel, I have the electrics, I have other stuff going on as well. So uh, I do want to make it a goal of mine to, to upload at least once per month on, not once per month. I wanna make a goal to upload at least once a week on this channel. I mean, I'm gonna be updating you guys with everything along the way, like my, my, my training schedule, my diet like I'm going to be like every video I'm gonna have some like food's gonna be in every single video food's an extremely important aspect to training for an Ironman and food's an extremely important aspect in general if you're an athlete so I'm going to be trying new things uh, with my diet with nutrition and also trying new things with training as well and I think that's really like the cool part about doing these is I can kind of uh, let you all know out there I mean all of you who are athletes out there you can see what's worked for me uh, and what hasn't worked for me. I just wanna let you guys know that I appreciate you and that I'm going to be really working hard to to get out videos to you guys on this channel. And I mean, I can't guarantee that they're gonna be like super, you know, super high production quality and there's gonna be tons of, you know, all this stuff and animations and all this stuff thrown at you guys. But I think that's also the cool part about this channel is that I can just, be myself, I can uh, show you guys where I fall short of things, I can show you when I fail, I can show you when I'm not having a good day, I can show you all of the things, you know? And I think that's cool. Uh, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, I got sick this week. I really amped up my swimming. Instead of swimming like once a week, I swam like three or four times last week. And upon doing more research, I found that people that swim more frequently in pools tend to get sick. So that's likely where I got sick. So I'm gonna have to figure something out there because I really don't want to keep getting sick. It really puts a roadblock in in my schedule. It puts a, like, I yeah, it sucks to get sick. Um, and I've had to take a few days off. I've literally like done nothing the, the past two days and it's really out of out of the norm for me. I really just genuinely want to know though, like what you guys want more of on this channel. Do you guys want to see more vlogs? Do you guys want to see more uh, just training footage? Do you guys want to see more about my diet, nutrition? Like what do you guys want to see? Uh, so be sure to let me know down below in the comments. And once again, I want to say thank you. I feel like I've said thank you like 8,000 times in this video, but thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next Electric Talks vlog. Later, everybody.